And as people drop in, uh, in the meantime, I just want to uh, introduce myself for people that don't know me. My name is Eli Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. I've been uh, uh, teaching and sharing this practice and providing uh, healing for people, working with them one-on-one -on -one for mm -hmm. over 10 years and uh, really stumble on this uh, energy practice uh, many, many, many years ago when I was still working as an architect and, uh, and uh, was dealing with my own uh, <clears throat> health issues as they develop from uh, stress, working many hours. And uh, what struck me is all of these all of these practices and a lot of the stuff that you can do yourself, you can heal yourself. I'm, I healed myself uh, back in the day and um, with after trying all these different uh, methods of, uh, of healing myself, Western medicine and pills and checks and exams and, you know, and <clears throat> if you uh, can heal yourself, and it's easy wouldn't that be the best thing to do and so this podcast is uh, this is this talks this chi talks are going to be transcribed into the postcode called awaken the healer within and this is because this is what it is really and this is uh something that we're not being taught told or taught anywhere and you know and from our perspective from our western medicine perspective what we know as medicine we go to the doctor only when we're sick so it's only when we're sick that we attending, uh, we, we were, we're requiring about, about health and well-being, but really in the East is, is about how to maintain your own health. And this is something that you do always at all times. So, so health and healing is, is seeing, uh, we call it now preventative medicine. But preventative medicine is is really, if, if you look at a lot of the cultures in the East, it's part of their culture. So the part of how they eat, you know, when I was in China, how they eat, how, how they, what, what they do is, is just so part of their culture that you wouldn't think that is something that you do, uh, that you have to do, like you go out and do Qigong, or you go out and eat in a certain way, or you, you you do this before you sleep and you do this when you wake up and them to them this is something that you just this is how you live this is how you live life and this is really more like a lifestyle uh something that is inherited from father to son and, and this is how they do stuff and it's pretty amazing so you see how chinese medicine is in infiltrated into the culture into how they eat, into how they talk with each other, into all kinds of things that are do and do not do. Uh, and, um, and that's what, what, what keeps the general population very healthy. And Qigong is being practiced all the time. It was amazing. When I was in China, you see people like uh, sh uh, owners of shops stepping outside of the shop when there's no customers and they're doing qigong you see them on the street i have some videos of that and they're doing qigong they're moving they're breathing they're moving the arms they're doing their martial art things and and they, and you see them in the big uh plazas and they're always and they're always moving they're always breathing and they do it in groups and they're doing it by themselves and it's always in the street and uh i read an article where they said that uh, actually china is the most uh, the most the people that exercise the most, the, the most fittest, which is kind of interesting. And uh, and uh, being there and, and in the big cities even, <clears throat> they do it. So um, so just kind of a little side note, you know, and we are we are here to kind of spread this word and, and we, we kind of lost in touch in the Western world with with um, we, with these practices, with some of this you know, we, we drink alcohol, we party late, we go to sleep late, we look at the TV, we obsess with looking at our smartphone, we eating junk food, fast food, because we don't have time. And all these things are really, uh, really affecting our health and well being. And so, 
So how can we adopt principles of health and well-being and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, some of this is changing the lifestyle, but uh, some of these practices are very easy and can be done. And eventually your lifestyle is going to change. So uh, I guess it's, it's something that is easy to do, but, but eventually it's, it's, it's a life changing uh, uh, way of living, of understanding how to look at life from a different perspective. Here we're looking at the immune system from the internal energy practice. We're not, we're not looking for to, to take a zinc or a vitamin C. That, not that it doesn't help, it helps a lot, but uh, that wouldn't prevent you from getting the, the flu or this virus or that virus. You know, you're seeing a person getting getting a flu and the other person did not. This got COVID and this guy didn't get <laughs> didn't get COVID. And you're you're asking like where, why am I more susceptible than this person, or why this person more susceptible than the other person? And it all has to do with your internal energy and how strong your life force is. So we're talking in in Qigong and it's like your life force. And yes, it has to do with your breathing practices. If you are on a, always a low chronic stress, you're going to be breathing a certain way and that would deplete your lung qi. If you are depressed, we talked about depression, how emotional stressors are, um, are, 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 are really taking a toll on your immune system tremendously tremendously and especially uh the depression and sadness and grief it's not that it's bad to do it we talked about it last time but it's it's like how do you respond to what happens in your life you know i was talking with my sister she's gonna watch this video and then she's gonna say i can't believe you told you know she's gonna call me after this if she would listen to it but i'm gonna hide it <laughs> But I was talking to my sister and she's very, you know, in Israel, they have a very strict COVID uh, regulation. And when I was there visiting my sick mother, uh, it was all in lockdown. It's police reinforced lockdown and it's nothing that we, we know here. You know, we're very spoiled here in the US, really. Um, and there it's very militarized. I have to say it's, it's, it was pretty shocking. And she's very upset with all the rules and all the, and always upset and came to visit me here to, to kind of take a break from it and came back to there and, and, and she keep complaining. We talked about complaining <laughs> last time and how complaining is putting you actually in a, a lower stature, a lower uh, vibration because you're being really saying that you're a victim. So again, she's complaining about Israel and all what they do and how they're very upset, very upset about this and that. And I told her, you know, it's, you know, it's like, look at all the energy that is going there and what you put into, so into your body, you definitely lowering your, your immune cells react, you lowering your chi by, 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 uh, giving, uh, stress to enter your body by giving anger to be inside of you you giving food to ailment to ailments really and this is how the Taoists see it you giving by an emotional uh, distress is really inflammation this is how it's being seen in traditional chinese medicine like any other inflammation anger is inflammation depression is inflammation and it acts on the body every emotion with it's part of the body <clears throat> and so uh so we had to talk about it we had and I, she told me and so what do you what do you want me to do what what do you want me to do it's it's really upsetting that that you know all the countries other countries do that and israel decided to do this and this is really upsetting i told her you know you, you it's it, you have to do you have to accept it you have to just let it go you have to just forget it and 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 forgive and just to focus on other things in your life and to just do it and and don't bother with it anymore and you have to you have to smile to it you have you have to change your attitude to it you have to have it not bother you anymore you have to see how you do that and you have to just uh shift your mind around it somehow look at it differently and um and so so really <laughs> really that's that kind of like if we're talking from that perspective emotional distress 
we want to understand that every time we getting uh, we're responding to life circumstances in a very uh, uh in, in an emotional distress we're giving food and water to elements to sickness and whenever we're smiling we're happy we we are we are it it deprives these uh the elements from food and water whenever we're happy whenever we're joyful whenever we do something with wherever we engage with love whenever we hug our partner wherever we make love with our with our uh with whatever with nature where we make love with uh, our partner we don't love with our pets when whenever we are focusing on that uh we are starving we may uh, starving the the ailments for uh giving them food and water i'm, I'm using this analogy because one of the taoist uh master used this analogy and it's very nice in a in a whole storyline it was very beautiful uh that he put it together but he he used this thing and anger as a as harboring ailments and happiness and love will will uh, de de deprive the element from water uh, and, and food in your body. So you want to look in, in your life, where is it? You know, I'm just kind of wrapping up the conversation from last time. So well, what's, what's, what's bothering you? <laughs> what's really bothering you? What are you upset about? <laughs> what are you complaining? That's the places that light can enter. That's the places where you can free up your chi reservoirs and uh, increase your immune cells activity and 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 all of that. So that's 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 kind of wrapping up from last week. And what I wanted to to kind of start to talk about is about uh, you know we we said we talked about the concept of wei chi uh, of uh, of guardian chi. And how the lung distributed that that guardian chi, and how <clears throat> working with the breath is very important for uh, strengthening your immune system because the lung is the one to distribute that wei chi. But where is it being created that wei chi? Where is is being stored in the body? That's interesting, right? So the lung distributed, and that's really powerful. And you can actually mobilize that Wei Qi into the perimeter of the skin and even beyond. You know, the way you hold your chest, the way you breathe, the way, yeah, all that would affect the distribution of the Wei Qi. And this, this Wei Qi, the, this um, uh, guardian Qi, what we call in Chinese medicine, is being stored in the digestive system, is being created in the digestive system. So the digestive system is another element that we want to talk about in reference to the immune systems that what you put in your body and what you eat is so important for your immune system. And we know it, right? When you're sick, what? I tell you eating soup, is it chicken soup? And you cannot even eat uh, hard digestible food and when you're sick because your body knows intuitively you don't want to eat. Why you don't want to eat? Why you don't want to eat when you're sick because it takes so much energy that's a very uh a strong consumption of energy going into breaking food into chi so it's like taking an apple and with all the the apple is so foreign to you it's just a tree it's just a fruit on a tree and then you want to make it part of your body well that takes a lot of energy to break that and make it part of your dna that is a lot of energy. And so, uh, so this act, act of transformation, it, it costs a lot. So when we eat a lot and, and we, we use a lot of chi. So when you're sick, you don't want to eat. You know, a lot of people heal through doing juice cleanses. We know it through, um, they do juice cleanses, getting all the vitamin and mineral, but there's nothing a lot to digest. It's very watery. So people do a lot of healing that way and you might you know we we we've heard about it we know about it and that's that's very important uh how to how to make the 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 process very easy very easy to free up more chi uh and so there's a certain there are certain things that th this is why in the winter by the way in the fall season you know when we started 
two sessions ago, I told you like, yeah, eat some soups, eat some congee, some oatmeal. If you pay attention, it's all like uh, water, like uh, it's stuff that has already been digested. Not so much. It's not, I'm not telling you eat raw food, like eat like <laughs> a raw, like apple or like, not that it's not good, but if you want to kind of prepare your body for the winter, if you're feeling a little under the weather, it's better to cook some soups, some stews, something that is highly digestible. And that would take less of your, less toll in your digestive system and would strengthen your weight. Qi. So that's very important to, uh, and this is why in, in Chinese restaurant, when I, when I went to China, you know, when, when you go to a restaurant that you sit and they pour you very little cups of water with your meal, very small cups. It's like a teacup, like this Chinese teacups and it's hot water because they don't want to kill the digestive fire. Yeah. So the, 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 your body temperature is much higher than the outside food that you're eating mostly. So eating warm food is very important. So your body doesn't need to warm up the food. <laughs> if you're eating cold food, you know, a lot of people do ice water. Ice water is a very, no, is a big no-no in Chinese medicine. And also when you go to China, maybe, maybe if you go to Beijing, to the new cities, they grabbed all these uh, culture from the West and now they serve they're serving they're serving ice water but if you go to a traditional chinese restaurant no ice water not even lukewarm water hot water with the meal and very small amount of it so uh so again so that's another thing that you want to eat uh, a hot warm food that that would be highly digestible one thing that would really tax your immune system would be fried food all the things we love huh so, <laughs> so fried food, you know, deep fried food is the worst for this, for your immune system, for your spleen energy. So we, a little bit starting to talk a little bit about diet and what you put in your body really affect your, uh, your, your, uh, your immune system. And also, I don't know if you remember, but we talked about joint health once and Marty, you were here and you were talking about tomatoes and how they inflame the joint more. So really food is very important you know what you put in your body is very important how it affects your body and in the in the fall season if we're talking about immune system we want to you want to eat things that are that are relatively bland and cooked and warm and uh and in terms of in terms of proportion uh we say that uh the vegetable should take most of the most of your um most of your intake, so 60% is vegetables in Chinese medicine. This is first Chinese medicine, 60%. And the rest, 40%, so only 10% is meat. We do recommend eating some meat, just 10%. And so it's almost like a spice. Um, and then another 10% is legumes. We don't want to do a lot of legumes because they're also hard on the digestive system. Yeah, and legumes also have acid, so that would that would affect the joint, by the way. So just talking about joint health, because we're kind of mentioning that legumes and red meat would be the one. So if you eat meat, then uh, chicken or fish would be better than red meat in terms of its effect on joints um because of the acid the the liver has to clean the acid from the from the from the yeah and the acid is being formed yes yeah, so the acid and then it, it goes to the joint and if the liver is overworked or compromised or whatever it is then it it won't it won't clear the acid from the red meat and the and the legumes and tofu is a legume by the way so if you're a vegan and you're eating lots of lots of tofu, it's <laughs> there's a lot of acid could be built up. And uh, so just uh, notice, so 60% vegetables, 10% meat, 10% legumes. What else do we have? You know, so, uh, and then the, the, the vegetable, the, the um, recommendation that it would be 
lightly cooked not cooked until you don't recognize the vegetable that you cooked it in <laughs> but really um you know cook it very lightly so it's al dente so you can uh so it preserve but it breaks down a little bit of this uh, so the body can digest it a little easier so it's a little easier to digest there's a big a big uh you know you can you can read about an article about how human life human expectancy actually went much higher after the discovery of fire so when humans started to cook their food <laughs> they actually become healthier stronger and living longer so i know that there's a lot of raw foodists out there and the people that eat only raw it takes a lot of it it takes a lot of toll on your energy and there's uh you know to break down the 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 food i mean it could be it could be great if you really know what you're doing and you're eating uh, in a certain way but uh for just general it's good to uh not that i'm i'm saying don't eat salads at all and don't eat raw at all yeah yeah you can eat if you're a healthy person uh you should eat uh, uh raw some raw food it's it has a lot of good enzymes there and and it's really all about balance i would say but uh per chinese medicine everything should be lightly cooked they say that even the fruit i don't do it <laughs> i love my strawberries fresh so <laughs> but uh but just uh this is kind of like the recommendation <clears throat> and and uh again no fried food sugar white sugar refined sugar considered to be toxin like actually a toxin it's it's uh it, it is like eating uh poison in in chinese medicine and what it does to the body is inflammation par excellence so it's uh it's a big no-no any additive sugar so here we are destroying all the <laughs> all the fun from our diet no sweets, no fried food, <laughs> no alcohol. So, I mean, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's each, you know, you have to, you have to think for yourself, how, what do you want to, like, how do you balance it? Or what, 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 what is your life balance? You know, it's, it's very personal and it really depends on, on, you know, I stopped drinking alcohol many, many, many years ago because of my health condition that was started when I was an architect. And I noticed when I drink alcohol, it just doesn't feel, and then so I stopped for a few years and then I healed myself, not because of the alcohol I was, I healed myself but but the alcohol helped me heal myself the stopping the alcohol helped me heal myself and then <clears throat> i just stopped it altogether uh but each to his own and everybody has their own life story and how it, it it's but if you love alcohol maybe have a small cup you know uh what can i say you know there are people that live very long life that drink alcohol daily <laughs> One of them is the, the 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 British Queen. I just read an article that the doctor told her that she stopped drinking her her evening uh, cocktail. She liked gin tonic, and they just told her to stop it because she's now she's I think she's ninety five ninety five. She drink alcohol every day, small cup of gin tonic before bed. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Only if you're the Queen of England, you can do it. <laughs> so um so that's that's what uh, that's that's a uh that's what we i wanted to talk about at this time is about digestive health and how the digestive system is so important for for your uh for your immune system and a little bit of chinese medicine principle here and there so you just um just kind of have a, a a way of 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 going about it eating warm food not cooling the digestive system no sugar no alcohol no fried food that's that would be and uh and that's very general kind of strokes and but that would be that would be important and you know not not eating late at night big meals big meals late at night are not good one of the most powerful um 
ways to boost your immune system is good sleep, by the way. So we're back to sleep here. Good sleep is without good sleep. If you list, le, uh, sleep less than six hours a night, like five hours, then your immune function lowers down more than 50%, half of it the next day. So it's, uh, it's tremendous. It's actually the most, uh, the, the, the most of anything that, you know, sleep is just the most important thing in terms of immune health. And that would be, you know, that everybody would tell you that in, in that works in Chinese. And now doctors would tell you that too. So, um, so join our uh, good night Qigong <laughs> and sleep good. And there's a way to secure good sleep. We talked about it before. Maybe we can do another talk about it. Is there, I just noticed that we didn't do an opening ceremony. So we do a, a good closing ceremony today. But I just wanted to kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah, we did, I just wanted to kind of um, ask if there's anybody that want to ask anything or, um, or add anything to this. This is this is the time. I see that. Uh, thank you so much for the attendance. That's really great to see so many people here. Uh, and uh, yeah, Bart, go ahead. Do you have any advice on how to get rid of? Oh, I cannot hear you. Oh, can you hear him? You can. Hold on, Bart. I uh, something is. Oh, one second, Bart. <clears throat> yes, I hear you now. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have any advice on how to get rid of sugar completely and forever? Because I've been trying it for three or four years and I can't do it. Because it's hidden everywhere and there's so many dis distractions. It's added almost everywhere in normal supermarkets. So have, do you have any tips? Well, are you talking because it's hard for you um, not to have it like emotionally you want to add it or you just buy things that they have sugar in them and because I mean you could look at the label and see if they added sugar and then don't buy it. Yeah, but it's, it's more it's more it's about the emotions, not about the food. It's a little bit mm. emotional eating, but it's so difficult to completely get not uh, so to not eat sugar at all because uh, the challenges are everywhere i mean mm -hmm. you get out, out of the house and you get into a cafe or a bar and there is cookies and cakes and it's everywhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> especially in europe even more yeah. right america too but europe too there we were like uh obsessed with with sugar and uh you know it's it's really my suggestion, I mean, we can open it to other people's suggestion. It's really like how to form a new habit kind of thing, how to how to stop doing things. And I, I would say do it in stages, like gradually, you know, uh, do all kinds of rules around it. So like, let's say when you are here, you don't you don't have it or like uh, uh, I would always try to if we want to form a new habit is trying something more gradual. Like if you know that you are taking a, a, something sweet in the end of the day, I know that I used to have it in the end of the day, like it's really late and I'm like, oh yeah, I want that little ice cream today. And, uh, and then I just, just say, okay, that I'm going to stop that. And I stopped that and I, I just did something else. Another idea. And so, so slowly by slowly, you, you're just kind of tackling everything, but also, there's substitutions that could be very, very good, like um, like fruit, you know, like dates. I know that dates are very good because even though they have a, a high sugar content, they have a lot of fiber in them. So they're highly fibrous. So they're actually good for you. Like like dates are it. Jujubes, that they're the Chinese dates. They're actually very good for the blood. They're they're we're eating them in, in Chinese medicine to clear the blood, to uh, support uh, uh, cardiovascular function. And, and it's actually considered to be like a little miracle fruit. It's uh, the Chinese date called jujube. And it is kind of sweet, not as sweet as the majul date, uh, 
but it is kind of sweet. So I think like if you stock up some dates or jujubes, you're going to be healthier and you that's your cookie. But I wouldn't say like stop all of it together. I think uh, I think like only when you're out or only like, you know, you're starting to build like uh, you're starting to build a little bit something around it and give yourself a break uh, once in a while. Uh, and sl slowly reduce the, the sugar content. And, and, and the substitutions are great. Like honey is really good for the lungs in Chinese medicine, per se. Uh, so you could, you could substitute uh, the cookie for like something else. Um, that would help a lot, I think. That would be my, my recommendation. What? Uh, thank you, Bart, for this. This is this is a big one. This is a big one. You know, or uh, part of food is emo. It's big part of food is emotional. Um, emotions. Uh, we eating. Uh, we are emotional eaters, really. Yeah. I mean, we all know that. We've. Uh, we're not eating only when it's necessary. Otherwise, we our nation are going to look different, right? We, our body's going to look different <laughs> if we would do that. So it's good to understand it. And, it, uh, and mindfulness practice, Qigong meditation would help you to get closer to the real, like what you really need. Because a lot of time when we're too much in our mind, we would grab things and we would just kind of forget. But when you're in your body a lot, meditating, Qigong, you're doing it regularly, you're a little bit more mindful. I, I can say it for myself, since I start practicing Qigong, I'm, I'm, I, it's much easier for me to be mindful and to say this is no, this is yes to myself. And, uh, and it's, I think it's a good practice to like do these boundaries to yourself, to, to kind of do it's it's very very good to um, for your mind and for your energy uh, to to kind of limit yourself from some things for a little bit for a little while and 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 do that and uh, usually it ends up in more more happiness you know it's kind of funny but you know we have this notion in the West that it all needs to be free everything is freedom 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 and a lot of people get lost in this freedom and they actually don't have structure and they're actually not happy. And whenever there's more structure, whenever there's more structure, whenever life is so simple, simpler, all of a sudden people, it, it's, it's less overwhelming. It's less overwhelming. And uh, a lot of people that are part of uh, orders like religious or monks, they actually, they actually have a very happy life. Uh, anyway, that's I'm going off of, from this, but uh, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting thing, like the the uh, when we are, you know, when we are limit, and we are simplify, you know. So anything else? Anybody else wants to? I love this stuff. It's so good, Bart. You always ask, bring the best questions here. Thank you. Yes, Marty. I just wanted to say something to, to Bart. Just the fact that you are aware of of the sugar problem in the world makes it makes you you are one step ahead of the game. You know, just a simple thing like starting to read your your um, labels on products, and then the decision whether or not you want to bring it into your home is up is is then up to you, and that kind of gives you an empowerment to figure out the sugar solution, which a lot of us are trying to figure out and, and to be kind to yourself because there will be days where you want to have that. And then that gives you the taste and the empowerment for the next day to say no to it. And I think it's a lesson that we all try to learn in our diet quest. Um, I had, I took the uh, Ellie's class this morning and then I had two conversations with friends and one is recouping from uh, having the virus and pretty serious. And we talked about uh, diet and we talked about foods and I asked her, cause I'd like to meet her for lunch, what she could be eating. And the first thing out of her mouth was she says, the only thing I can really tolerate now are warm soups. 
So I thought that was kind of interesting. So we're going to meet tomorrow at a place where we can order soup because that's what her body can tolerate right now. Um, and the other friend talked about her digestive system and that she's having problems and acid reflux and how important it is for her to be conscious about what she's taking into her body right now because it's the change of the season, because she's having this reaction. So it's like, and, and the fact that she likes her wine. She likes to have a glass of wine at night. So, you know, we're just all becoming aware, I think, in this part of our lives to figure out what really works for our digestive, for our bodies, mm -hmm. and then play into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marty. Yeah. And, uh, you know, about alcohol before sleeping, it's, it's if you do it two hours before sleeping, that's better than right before because the body would process the alcohol and it wouldn't uh, mess up with the REM, with the deep sleep, by the way, if you can tell it to your friend. Right, <laughs> so right. just two hours before. Uh, yeah, Edward. So this is a great conversation. And thank you, Marty, for what you said just now too. But um, so we always have a mantra hidden, but on the refrigerator. And it says, don't touch it, don't taste it, don't begin. And, you know, it's like when you go for a snack in the refrigerator, you don't want the wrong stuff. And every, everything is a habit, scientific fact. It takes uh, three weeks to make or break a habit. And wine turns to sugar. Alcohol turns to sugar. Bread turns to sugar in your body. So you, you got to be, you know, very, very careful. And what I've learned is this oat milk is incredible. And you said it you know a minute ago with oatmeal it's yeah. incredible what that'll do for you to clean your blood to clear your you know your body so you know it's really important and uh, going back to the beginning conversation of completing last week my mother would always say to my sister and i if you cry you cry alone if you laugh the world will laugh with you and i you know i have conversations with you about that it, it it really has grown in my life. And she would say the words are in the music. And I repeated this a few times in your classes. And it's like, the words are in the songs, my mother would say. And Carly Simon would say, I don't have time for the pain. And I always live in that mantra. And the minute something goes south, I'll get into my head and go, la, 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 la. It just, I'm so trained to do it, not to stay in negativity not to stay in pain. And it's, and Marty just said it, you know, you have the choice. You really have the choice to do what you want to do. And um, it's so careful. Uh, we have to be careful. We have to be strong. And it's a lot easier not to eat the ice cream than to have arthritis or acid reflux or something much easier. <laughs> Uh, but humans get stuck and they'll still have the junk. So you, <laughs> you got to be strong. You got to fight it and play the game. And and we have a harder game to play too. I just wanted to say it because, you know, when I when I was up in China in the, in the mountains with the monks and we we're, they're just getting their diet. The, the, the nuns are cooking the food and they just eat it. There's no options to buy ice cream. The ice cream, there's no ice cream. It's like they're just eating what they're being served. So it's very easy, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, but but we are really needing to see all the temptations, especially here in the West, and to avoid it. So it's it takes more. So it's you know just acknowledge, acknowledge yourself that you are uh, you know, and to to go against the stream, to go to a bar and not drink alcohol. You know, I don't go to bars anymore. But anyway, uh, it's 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 a harder game. But uh, so I just wanted to acknowledge it. Right. Uh, wait, 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 quick thing. And there's a word in the song, Dionne Warwick, make it easy on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> there's my mother, make it easy on yourself. You, know, yeah. you have choice. <laughs> and, 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 and one of my master used to say that your emotional state is very important, more important than your diet. So I, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's very, if you're happy and if you're smiling and if you're, that's so much more important. So uh, it shouldn't be a, 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 a big burden. It should be a game. And if you can make it into a game, 
that that sugar thing and make it into a game and play with it and see how well you can do uh that would be better than seeing it as limiting or like fighting it or really being upset with with something so it's like how can we how can we not let it us uh, ruin our our life but but really make it into some challenge into a game into something that we're we're uh we're playing with and 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 like like edward say it'd be easy on yourself so that's uh thank you so much i think that's a, such an important conversation because so many people have issues with it it's just you're you're just it's the best question that could possibly be here talking about diet and talking about immune system so let's close it because we can a little bit over time but i think it was worth it so let's uh Let's close it with a little bit of a meditation. Let's actually start by tapping on the chest here, <laughs> closing the eyes and breathing and putting your mind into your heart, into this area that you're tapping on, exhaling from the mouth. Yeah, a few deep breaths and exhale all the way up. And if you can think about the breath in as loving energy, smiling energy to your lungs and heart, whatever ways you can visualize and see it, maybe a little smiley face that penetrate and soothe and calm. And just to, so you know that the color blue, like water is always calming and healing. especially in relationship to the heart, which is fire and red, water would be really soothing. Let's lower our taps into the digestive system since we talked about it so much. So the upper stomach first, tap on it with your two hands and breathe into the upper stomach. Good chi, good energy. exhale from the mouth all the way out notice when you exhale all the way out only then you can take a deep, deep uh, really a genuine deep breath in try to exhale all the way out now slowly all the way out and then watch the inhalation and then lower the hands to the navel area So two breaths here. All the way out. Now let's put both hands on the navel and just rest in this area. The eyes are closed and your mind is fixed on the point between the navel and the spine. Shoulders relaxed, chest relaxed. Your whole energy is within this area. Visualize that each inhalation, you're soaking up the energy in the whole universe into this area. Like you have a big magnet there and on the inhale, all the good chi is being accumulated there. And on the exhale from that area, it goes and travel throughout the body. So inhale, absorb from outside in. And exhale, distribute it in the whole body. Taoist breath meditation.
Inhale and exhale through the nose. The breath is a little calmer and longer. Body goes into a normal cycle of breath, a calmer and refined breath. Natural breath without regulating and controlling it. still absorbing the chi and distributing it on the exhale, absorbing on the inhale, distributing on the exhale. Nice, let's open the hands to the side, palm face the front, opening the eyes. Beautiful, thank you so much guys for showing up for coming here today thank you edward thank you bart so much thank you marty thank you corinne good to see you esther is here thank you and will all right guys thank you so much tomorrow is good night qigong don't miss it <laughs> i know already who's not gonna miss it <laughs> all right guys bye now